afternoon and good to have you today yet another day um i saw someone on twitter saying that thursday is the taxation thursday and i think i'll jump on that it, it made a lot of sense to me and i really want to congratulate you Mugerwa, for being part of this conversation and learning in one way or the other and today with main studios we're going to be discussing about settling the tax disputes with the uganda Revenue Authority. In this conversation today, I'm honored to have um, uh, Miss Fiona Akulo, the Acting Manager, Legal Services Department, and we have Mr. Ali Dechi Sali Alex, Acting Supervisor, Litigation. So, if you're one of those who has been part of the conversations of URA every Thursday, when we're talking about how best to, you know, get on board and how do you stay, you know, compliant, how do you make sure your business is in tandem with the state laws on uh, taxation. Not only that, the benefits that come with you being part of the taxation is a great conversation. So be a part of this conversation on Twitter and YouTube and on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook, I'll, I'll pick some of your feedback later. Any question you have, just drop it there. Good to have you, gentlemen and lady. It's Thank you, uh, Andrew. Pleasure to have Alex, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you and it's an honor to have you, um, Fiona. Fiona, I'll start off with something very simple. We're talking about um, settling disputes with uh, the URA. Yes. We are talking, are we talking as um, individuals or are we talking as companies? In what context do we have this conversation from? Um, thank you so much, Andrew, and uh, good afternoon, our viewers, um, mm. and thank you for being with us today. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that um, as URA, mm. we are in every way possible trying to reach out to our taxpayers, our clients. So in this conversation, when we're talking about um, settling disputes, we're looking at settling disputes with taxpayers who may be individuals mm -hmm. or who may be companies mm. because as the law recognizes we'll have taxpayers you'll have persons mm. who uh, you'd have a person who is an individual and you'd have a person who is a partnership and you'd have a person who is a company mm. so mm. in all cases we're looking at settling disputes with persons and that includes all those persons that i have mentioned that sounds great yeah. alex um I, I i love how she puts it settling disputes does it mean because all of you come from the litigation uh, department, legal, 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 does settling necessarily require us to go to courts of law or there is a mechanism under URA where taxpayers can come and, you know, have a, a very good conversation with maybe the legal department or any other department and the disputes are settled within? Thank you very much, Andrew. Mm. Uh, good afternoon to our viewers. It's an honor to be here. Yes. Uh, to answer your question, not every dispute requires you to go to court. Uh -huh. Not every dispute. And for most times, it is possible and it's advisable that a person should consider an alternative of settling disputes. Before it's court? Before court. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> nice. even in African traditional society, mm. there used to be those ways of settling disputes. Even mm. at home, before your father starts guiding you or anything, there is that bit of you have a chit chat and start talking. Yes. And then before you know it, you're no longer stealing the sugar. <laughs> that yeah. kind of thing. So it's... There's also that bit with us. We, we have the same with you. Yes. That is good. Now, that sets the pace of our conversation today. Um, Fiona, when we talk about um, the redress proceedings for taxpayers, it's some kind of a jargon to us as, you know, lay people mm. and to our and see. To break it down for us to understand it, what could this mean and what entails this entire process? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, redress is, um, to put it in very simple words, it's like uh, trying to, to correct something okay. or to set something right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll give an example. If, uh, for example, a taxpayer has an issue with a return that was filed, hmm. or maybe uh, a return that was filed but was not complete in the sense that maybe we, he or she did not attach um, evidence of expenses. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do with redress is we're trying to set it right, to set that, um, that filing that was done hmm. right, or to set an assessment that was raised against the taxpayer rights mm. in respect of um, the taxpayer's liability uh, while referring to the, the documentation that has been availed by the taxpayer in respect of that assessment. Mm. So in other words, it's redress is where we come together with you as our taxpayers mm. because mm. Um, 
what we look at, uh, what we consider as your A is our taxpayers are very important to us. Mm. So when you have these taxpayers, we are saying, come, let us have a, a conversation like we are having today. Yes. Let what are your issues? What is the problem? Mm. What is not going right in that assessment? Mm -hmm. What is not going right in in your tax issues? And how can we solve this? Or how can we set it right? How can we correct it so that at the end of the day? you are happy as a taxpayer and you make you continue in business and we as your a are able to collect the revenue that we are that is within our mandate so it's all about setting uh, setting the, the taxpayers affairs right at the same time being able to administer the tax laws for you alex d d does that come through to in case i under declared uh, for, 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 for Does lead risk process um, uh, come in, in, in the same way if it comes that way, uh, the way Fiona is saying? Yes, it can come. Uh -huh. Let me give you an example. Uh, Please. Most of the time, the taxpayer, like all we are taxpayers, most likely we are, mm. either I want to pay less, not pay at all, <laughs> or pay so little. Most of them are yes. not pay at all. Yes. Yes. Now, for you to have those three dimensions settled with URA, you're mm. going to land in one of those. Either okay. the assessment that was raised is going to be kicked off because you've come, or it's going to be reduced, or we're going to say, or the taxpayer actually wants to delay and give you put, put you in this <laughs> minute where you're going to be keeping on talking to him. You know, he's clearly know money. all the games of and the taxpayers. They will pay. Yeah. But in <coughs> any community, there must be disputes. Yeah. Disputes are there, and these ones are all normally caused because of interpretation of the law. The way you might interpret it might be different from how I perceive yes, that's it. True. So, in the misapplication by URA of a certain law or mm. a certain section about income and expenses is going to, to bring out you to go to a tax consultant. A tax consultant would mm. probably interpret it differently. Differently, yeah. That way, dispute will come up. So, uh -huh. that will lead you to a place which uh, Miss Fiona is talking about mm. of redressing it. But when it reaches that point, URA wants to win the trust that uh, uh, transparency mm -hmm. with the taxpayer mm -hmm. because if you came to URA and you're saying this assessment is not correct you should put all the cards on the table yes. let's come out fully mm -hmm. let's put these things here and start talking because it's most likely when you're talking to URA it's all, all it's going to be about money yes it's, <laughs> it's, about it's money. always about money and it's your <laughs> money they're discussing <laughs> with the taxpayer that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm coming to have a redress again Alex what are some of the tools I should come with? Because uh, I'm just not going to come and I say they gave me unfair assessment. At times when they send me those emails, I, I drive to Chira and mm. I say, this is the mail you sent me. How did we get here? So what are some of the things that someone should possibly come with if they're coming for this kind of process? And the kind of attitude they should come with. You know, at times when you're coming as taxpayers, we say, Kangende Mbarage. <laughs> So, so there is a lot of bias we come with. We come with a lot of baggage of um, this has always been unfair. So preparing the mind of, um, of a taxpayer coming to, to, to go through this process, what are some of the tools they should come with? Because this is, we, we need to find fairness, but I'm, I, I need a dice I'm negotiating with. Yeah. Mm. All right. I, I think we're all, most of the taxpayers are definitely Ugandans. Mm. And any tax that you pay, just know it's really contributing to having our country become better, become economically independent, mm -hmm. and also to make sure that we can fund our own budgets and not really depend on loans and grants outside. So a taxpayer should be paying willingly. Mm -hmm. Now, the percentage of willing taxpayers to come and self-assess themselves, mm -hmm. and those ones who actually they are picked from the gutters and told, hey, you have to pay this much, mm -hmm. URA is rather encouraging you to do the self-assessment yourself. Now, in doing the self-assessment, you might make a lot of some few mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can commit an error in the return. Mm -hmm. uh, you might not attach the evidence that is needed. Mm -hmm. Or you must have misapplied the facts. Or you came late to put in your return. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So, if you came to URA and you needed redress, I would expect or would require that you come with certain things that are key. Mm -hmm. For example, let me give you an example of a certain business, the business of fishing, for example. Mm. If I'm a dealer in fish, mm. I go to Mr. Chamagero, mm. who is at the landing site. Yeah. Mr. Chamagero does probably just has the 
the, the, the technical know-how mm. of probably jumping into the lake and yes. all these things, but does mm. not have the boats, does not have money to put uh, fuel into the boats, mm. does not have uh, nets, does not have uh, floaters, life jackets, and all these other things. Mm. I am the Mugaga. Yes. Here. May I have yes. the skill yes. to get the fish. And Fiona here is going to be that other person who exports the fish. Yes. Now, I'm at a learning site in Masaka. Mm. Oh, Bukakata. maybe in TV. Mm. Yeah? Mm. You go, you fish. You, when you're selling to me the fish, Mr. Chamagero, mm. the fish has scales, it has fins, it has uh, gills, mm. and also there's a percentage of water in there. Yes. Mm. Now, for the informal businesses, mm. which is one of them, by, uh, by the way, mm. and also several others, mm. which you are might not have covered, or we are planning to do I, I those you're kind coming. of things. <laughs> yes? You're already coming. So, if you have certain expenses, for example, mm. some of the expenses that I've mentioned are inclusive of fuel, and you're not sure, as Mr. Jamagero, that you're going to get into that lake, and on a bad day, a bad weather like today, mm. that fish is going to be there. It must have taken a holiday or going to look for warm water yeah. when the water is too cold here. Mm. Something like that. So it's yeah. possible that you're going to invest the fuel, invest everything else, mm. but there not is no get catch. the fish. Mm. There's no catch that day. Mm. And now, you have expense, the expenses, but there's no income at all. Mm -hmm. Now, if you bought some fish, brought it here to me, mm. who's going to take it to maybe the Chinese or mm. the Indian mm. Fiona here to take it away mm. to outside countries, that fish also is going to lose a certain kind of uh, value if there are delays between me and, and you here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because mm. they want fresh fish. Now, when it reaches the factory at Fiona's, mm. it has to be skinned, they have to, to fillet it, mm. the bones are not taken, the fins are not taken, there is a percentage of water. Fiona is going to deduct all those things because they're useless to her. Oh, yeah. Yet, remember, me, I paid for them. Mm. When oh, yeah, I'm buying yes. from you, <laughs> I buy all these things. Everything. The scales, yes. everything. Now, I've not documented all these things. And I can't show to you RIA that actually they are scales. It is mukono mukono. And the business Cash. is generally yeah. informal. Yes. You probably don't have a receipt. Mm. But now in that instant case that I've showed you, it is possible that if a person is assessed, URA is going to use industrial averages. If you can't have uh, the, 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 the documents and evidence mm. to show. Mm. You're saying the assessment was too high, but you have no evidence to support it. So if you don't have the evidence, URA normally falls back to the industrial averages. It will look for some other person, someone who is else, compliant. Eh? Mm. A, 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 a kuja somewhere and tell Birikuja, mm. you know what? You do this kind of business, it will look into those returns and see that Birikuja has been having these kind of expenses. Mm. It will apply the same to me who has failed to prove them. Because wow. you're similarly. You're within the, the same, same range. Yeah. However, the evidence I'm talking about is non-existent, but it can be proved how, because it is known that, if, of course, fish It is working with water. someone. Yes. Mm. Now, this Indian right over here mm. is going to deduct probably 3% of the weight. That one he doesn't buy because it's water. Mm. He doesn't need it. Uh, the the fields, gills and uh, the, the fields gills yeah. and everything, yeah. they're also not there. So now, in such an instance where there is no evidence as mm -hmm. to paper, however, you have a believable story. Mm. You have things that you can actually say that indeed I incasa is kind of yes. of, of, of expense. Mm. And the income is not that I earn it every day. There are days when I can't catch because it's like you're, you're, it's like the a gamble. The moon nights, yeah? you, yes. you know when there is moon you can have a catch. Yes. The fish can see the net coming. So in those instant cases, I mm. would expect that this taxpayer, if they can't prove certain things, for example, they have no receipts, they have no other things. URS still has a fallback position of comparing. Mm. Mm. But now the instance, the problem is going to come where they have compared you with a certain taxpayer well, who is way bigger than He's you. industrial. Yeah? yeah? He's industrial and you're not. Yes. So they have to, look, they look at all those things. Mm. When you come to table and start discussing, you tell them, you know what, mm. this 3%, whereas I expensed it here and I paid for it with Mr. Mm. Uh, uh, Jam Jamagero mm. here, yeah. this one doesn't buy mm. it because now that's a loss to me. Uh -huh. I expensed, but it's not here. Now, yeah. if the, m the Indian has reported, of course the Indian is going to report everything on the they latter. They will. Yeah? <laughs> yes. And now, of course, URA will get to know by third party, that's yes. the third party, uh -huh. that actually you sold to them this much fish. Now, At this the other third party they would have compared me with was Mr. Chamagiri, but Chamagiri is not known anyway. He just goes to the lake, picks fish, sells to <laughs> And me. sells it. You get it. Yes. Mm. So, that kind of impasse, the dreadlock that is there 
is what needs to be solved by what we are talking about today, the redress that is alternative. Because okay. when you go to court and use the normal way of mm. uh, litigating and fighting over these things, the normal way, mm. you mm. might get it wrong. You However, if you case. came and sat down with URA mm. and said, look, this is what it is. I don't have receipts, but I have this. They can have a chance of looking at things and we go here and there, and they can yeah. go around it. Uh, uh, Akulo, this brings me back to you. He, he, in his submission, he has alluded to something called self-assessment regime. Mm. I want you to, to, to take us back a little bit in the self-assessment regime because um, in his submission, it occurs to me that um, I need to... to to take a moment, me as Andrew, and I say, okay, now this is how much I'm earning. These are my mm. expenses. I am going to file willingly, without cohesion. Yeah. And on the other side, again, he alluded to those ones who are going to be pointed from the gutters, like, come and pay these taxes. Mm. Take us through the process of um, the self-assessment regime. How does um, the tax dispute arise? Yet there is self-assessment regimes and all. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, now, as the law is, um, the law gives a taxpayer the liberty to file, uh, to do a self-assessment. Mm -hmm. And um, you, uh, the, the self-assessment, the returns that we envisage under the law, uh, you have the income return, you have the VAT return. So, uh, and there are also timelines that are specified under the law. Mm. So you'd have, for example, for VAT, you have uh, the 15th day of every month. And then you have for income, income you have uh, the provisional return, which is on the, th the, the, we have the 31st of December of every financial year. And mm -hmm. then you have the, the final return, which is, at, uh, which is on the 30th of June mm. of that same financial year. So you have the timelines that are specified, and then you have the actual return that the taxpayer has to file, mm. which, is, which should be a reflection of your income or a reflection of your business activities. So in filing these returns, uh, like Alex has, has, has alluded, mm. documentation is very, very important. And this is one thing that we would like to emphasize as URA. Documentation. Yes, it's very, very important. Whatever kind of expense it is that you seek to claim or to, to, to use to reduce your tax liability, then that expense must be... Um, must be in form of, of documents. There must be some kind of documentation to prove it. If you say you spent this much on salaries, if you spend this much on, on transportation costs mm -hmm. while um, making income, then you have to have evidence to that effect. So it's very important for us to keep documentation. So at the point where a taxpayer is filing their returns, mm -hmm. you find that some of them would actually make a, a s file a return, but they would not attach documentation. Or you find instances where they'll file a return, but maybe it's out of time and then the penalties will come in. And, and those are the issues, those are the scenarios that would bring um, the disputes. Bring the disputes. Mm. So in as much as it's filed a return, maybe he's out of time in terms of, uh, in accordance with the law. Mm. And so the, the penalties will start to run. Mm -hmm. And then you find where there is uh, maybe a self-return, he has declared um, income or he's de declared uh, business income in respect of his return, mm -hmm. but it doesn't speak to what is actually on the ground in terms of their <laughs> business. So you find some big businesses filing returns and the income and, and and also you have scenarios where for uh, for example uh, you have um, sales ledgers you have uh, bank statements mm. your bank statements uh, which uh, which actually reflect your business activities and your sales ledgers do not speak to the return that you actually filed mm. so such scenarios uh, would bring tax disputes because at the point where a taxpayer files a s uh, uh, makes a self-assessment and URA is not convinced <coughs> that that assessment actually speaks to the taxpayer's business activities mm. then the law gives URA the opportunity to to make an additional administrative ret um, assessment and mm. in such cases that th such cases result into a tax dispute because mm. the taxpayer is saying this is my income these are my expenses but what is actually on the ground is different and so URA will go ahead to raise an additional administrative assessment how does your get will. to know that these are the real income I'll give you an example um, I'm a journalist and I work in my payment is very clear through the accounts department. Andrew is paid this much money. But I have my side gigs mm. and I'm doing my side my side gigs. What if um, um, someone will say that this is much this is how much I'm earning, just showing you the the the, the the NTV salary mm. scale and mm. um, the returns, mm. but when the others are not captured, 
how does your A get to that? That it, it will it will go on the reality and say, but you see, Chamagero, if you're earning seven million per month and uh, you're paying this much from these other you know gigs you get because we have the gig economy you're not filing these other ones mm. uh, how does your a get to that uh, there are many ways your a can get to find out i'll like? give an example if you're doing a gig for nile breweries as an yes. example mm. nile breweries will most definitely indicate that as an expense i have seen that they, they even yes. send you the invoice they say yes. 16 percent yes <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they'll file, the, they'll, they'll declare it as an expense. Okay. Now, on this, on the other hand, mm. you may not have, de you, you will not have declared it. Mm. And so in, in doing a reconciliation, say for example for Nile Breweries, you are able, that would raise a question. Chamagiro will Chamagiro pop. receive this amount of yes. income. Did he actually declare it? And that's ah. where the questions come in. And that's where the tax disputes come in. So it, that's why it's very important in the self-assessment to be as honest as possible. Countrymen, this conversation is meant to, you know, illuminate you and I on the duty we have to make sure that the tax body uh, widens uh, the tax base that can develop our country. And on the contrary, to come, you know, you come clean. When they say self-assessment, they're meaning come clean and let's have a conversation. Uh, Alex, Fiona they say that, um, you know, you come, we talk and all that. She hinted on something called timelines. Mm. Let's let, let's go through the timelines. In case um, uh, 15th is, um, that's when we have to file our, our taxes. And she mentioned 31st of December, then she mentioned 30th of June. In case someone does not meet the timelines, how do we go about that? Do we have extensions? And if there are extensions, how do I apply for extensions uh, so that I avoid the tax disputes that could culminate in case I don't do such? Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Mm. In that uh, perspective, if time has run out for you mm. to actually file a return, there are options that you have mm -hmm. to do. One of them is you can uh, write to the Commissioner General. Mm. I'm not saying his son will read the letter. <laughs> the law says you write to the Commissioner General. <laughs> or you write to the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes or mm. any relevant <coughs> commissioner mm. to request for time such that you can time can be extended for you to be able to file mm. that return. Okay. That's one. But there are instances whereby you've probably filed the return yesterday and you're still within time. Mm. That one you can just go back and again change the things, give reasons why you're changing and it, it will go. Okay. But where time has run out, then you have to seek for what they call extension. Like I'm, I'm, I'm one week or two weeks back. Yes. Uh -huh. You seek for an extension, it's through writing. Mm. Writing of any format, as long as it's writing. The law says writing. Mm. So you either scribble down on a paper mm. or you go into the system mm. which you have been calling portal. The portal, yes. Mm. Which is a difficult word to use here, mm. but well, the portal. <laughs> yes. And you know, you, you punch in the things and uh -huh. give your reasons, and then they can extend. Okay. Once they extend time, you're able to correct any misapplication, misapprehension, and all errors probably you put in there. But mm. they must be evidenced. And th it must be a genuine reason that actually this was an honest mistake. Mm. The reason why it was an honest mistake is because I left, I had, I did not have this information by time I was Finally. filing this return. Yeah. Now I have the information and now feeding it in into to give it to you as URA. Those okay. kind of things. It's not a matter of someone would want to amend the return to take down the what? The entire the, file. The entire <laughs> assessment <laughs> yes. to go down. I don't know why they never amend it to go upwards. <laughs> it's very rare. It, it <laughs> always has to come down. But, but it happens because mm. If you file the provisional return for income tax, because mm. provisional, provisional tax you're anticipating. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chamagero has anticipated that this year I'll make around two billion. Mm. So he pays tax on the two billion. Mm. That's provisional. But, but somehow, in the middle there, he notices I'm going to make more. Yeah. He can file another one. Yeah? That's on rare occasions. Yes, <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> okay. Then by the time you file your final return, yeah. You exactly know the amount. Then you can. It also allows you again to amend those particular things if you oh. had uh, not forecast mm. properly. And now you can forecast because you have the you have by June you have what exactly has happened. Yet okay. in December you didn't have it. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about um, the kind of taxes that th that could allow me to you know to be flexible with the timelines. Does it apply to every filing I'm doing, or it, it you have limitations? Um, what confuses my people? It's the payee. Uh, and, and the VAT, the VAT? VAT is per month, mm -hmm. the 15th of uh -huh. every month. Yes. And then uh, income tax, 
uh, I understand pays a withholding tax. Mm. So that one, as and when it is paid, it is remitted. And it's not you to remit it. It is my, my company. You, yes, you're paying, but someone employer. else remits it. Yeah. And the employer is on to, that's his problem. At times they take long. So they, do, do, are there penalties and how much are these penalties? There are penalties in case you've not uh, paid in time. In time, yes. And also the And you've interest. not explained. Yes, there's also <laughs> interest that accrues. Yeah. But what brings us <coughs> today here is to, 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 to tell our viewer today, mm. or our mm. taxpayer, that mm. whereas there might be the interest, there must be the penalties. Mm. There is a particular uh, a, a new dispensation, which I will call alternative dispensation uh -huh. that has come up, mm. that we can sit down and talk about these things. Yes, you didn't file in time, so mm. what happened? Yeah. Can we rectify this? Can we extend time for you to be able to file the correct thing? Mm. Or perhaps, if you say that the penalty is too high, or what we gave you is too high, are you willing to pay the principal? Mm. And if you're willing to pay the principal, how fast? Wow. These kind of discussions so are on We table. agree on, on the payment models as well. Not exactly that you're agreeing to the payment model mm. or cutting down the thing. It must be a believable... Uh, uh, should I call it uh, empirical evidence that you have? It must be believable. Mm. You must be able to support your argument. Okay. Why you should not pay certain tax. Yeah? Okay. If I've so told you to pay 200 million, but you're saying no, my company mm. does not even employ a number of employees to actually be able to raise 200 million. Mm. Because I'll say Chamagero and Company Limited mm -hmm. should pay 200 million in pay. Mm. And then what all you have to produce to me is probably my I don't have these kind of people. They are not that many. Mm. So I can't pay 200 million. You see, okay. that evidence is believable. Mm. But where you have a thousand employees, I'm giving you to say <laughs> probably one billion. And then you're saying uh, the, 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 the number of employees is also yes. big. And then you're saying you don't have it. I hear that you. one there will be a problem. So it needs to be evidence based. I, you must come with something that shows. So that if you have no evidence, just pay as, 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 as assessed by, by your. Uh, yeah, I believe so. so the just, mm. just to add to what Alex Please. Um, in, as in as much as you are, we are trying to do the alternative dispute resolution. Mm. Another thing that we are promoting is the payment installment plan. Mm -hmm. for taxes and the law allows uh, us to I, do I that. would love to hear that Be yes. because I, at times chikwata yes, yes yes we do understand mm. uh, because um, in as much as we are tax administrators we are human that's true and we do understand that uh, business has to continue like I said the taxpayers are very important to us without them we'll actually have no, no business revenue. yeah There'll be no revenue for us mm. to collect but because they're out there we're trying as much as possible to make uh, make it easy for them to continue with business but at the same time meet their obligations mm -hmm. under the tax laws so we do have the provision for payment of taxes in installments where taxpayers can request mm. to pay their taxes in installments um, especially in such a time as this where we've just come out of a pandemic COVID, yeah. mm. yes a pandemic so businesses are struggling and we have tax uh, we have tax disputes we have outstanding tax liabilities that have to be paid so mm. we encourage taxpayers um, to come up to URA, uh, you can come up to any of the regional offices, you can come up to any tax district, you can reach us on WhatsApp or any form, mm. but uh, and inquire about how you can benefit from this tax install uh, payment of taxes installments. But uh, we would also, uh, similar to a bank arrangement, would expect some kind of security, even as we give you this installment plan, oh. and you would be required to you'd write put it in writing the commissioner would approve it depending mm -hmm. on the number of installments mm -hmm. that is that are given to you and then you'll be given a payment installment plan and um, of course we'd expect you to provide some kind of security so that as you make the payments we also we have something to rely on as you're a or we can enforce whatever you have deposited with us in the event that you do not meet your obligations. No, but that, we, it's, it's not that we'll rush to a to a Yes, to that end. That, yes. that is to the we'll far end. And engage. Okay. Yeah. What kind of collateral would actually come in there while they have that kind of payment plan? Uh, we do take um, things like land, l certificates of title for mm. land. We do take um, uh, log books mm. and, and any kind of substantial assets okay. as long as it's in the name of the taxpayer. Wow. Yes. That's very interesting. Yes. Comrades, you can pay in installments as per agreed when you go for these kind of conversations of the disputes. So um, you can't reach to that level unless you've gone and you've had this conversation. Yes. And that's the fine. The first step is the conversation. Come okay. Let us talk. Mm. We are open. We're willing to listen. We understand the times. Mm. And we're, we're ready to help. I
You, you know, we need to cut this out. When, when she said that we are humans and we understand times are hard, come and tell us how you're facing. This is changing the entire picture and, and the perspective of URA, the one we know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a very good start to have this conversation, Alex. So when there is a disagreement of, um, of such like as, as, as the ones in the, fish, in, in, the, in the fish business where we are, you and I and the exporter, does your send me a message and say, Chamagiro, please come? Now, let me say I've failed to do a self-assessment. Does your A reach out to me and say, please come, you, you're defaulting here? As long, for example, let me mm. give you an example. There's third-party information. Mm -hmm. Chamagiro is not paying, is unknown. Yes. Alex here is known. With the Indian over there is known. Yeah. Chamagiro is not known. Mm -hmm. So with this third-party information, they will see that I, I am I'm buying this fish from someone. Uh -huh. So, definitely. They need to know supplier. <laughs> yes. The supplier is good in that way. They okay. will know the supplier. And it's easy. They will probably approach them and tell them, oh, they will just register you for a tin. Mm. By, by you, you can give you a tin any time. <laughs> as long as they know you have. Uh, you study business. Income, and there's business coming. Yes. In. And that way they will tell you now, please come. Let's have a chat. Mm. Do you have some books of accounts? Or if you don't have books of accounts, do you have some place where you write all your expenses mm. and uh, costing and maybe mm. the incomes that you get that helps those are the evidences we are talking mm. about it necessarily does not have to be if you can't afford the, an accountant mm. then there is a way you have to keep books of accounts the law says you keep some books something should be there and when that is there mm. then it gives you a starting point but the, it is difficult where someone comes and just simply tells you i don't have the the evidence of this mm. but also I don't have the money to pay it. Mm. Yes. Now, in those those circumstances where you don't have money to pay it, then we're going to go back to, to what what she was talking <laughs> about. Probably they'll pick your car, pick oh your shoe, yeah. things like that. Mm. Which we we don't want to get to that point. Mm. The point where we are at is the point where we are going to sit down, have a discussion with you. And now, wow. also before we get there, there are mm. certain administrative procedures procedures that mm. are there please if take you us do not some. actually agree with a certain <coughs> assessment it's not like when they send you an, uh, an assessment you should just simply pay mm. no mm. i've always called even if i was the one i would not i've always mm. called and i tell them this email i got i don't understand it and the following morning i drive to chira domestic i say uh-huh here i am <laughs> <laughs> and um i think i've always done that because your has been promoting this on twitter a lot and i've been picking it off twitter mm. that i can call and someone on the other side on the call center will tell me well andrew this is the assessment we made but please visit any of them they don't it's never done on the phone call they keep telling us to go to a particular any agent or any center to get mm. this rectified on the other side mm. so yes me on on, on this side every, every time i get the the assessment i'm like <laughs> because me I, I i think i am i'm tax sensitive mm. and um i i know this in one way or the other builds the country but for our other people, especially in the informal sector, th this conversation, I love it a lot that the informal sector can get on board, mm, especially the fishmongers. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. as I was saying, mm. if not every tax uh, or assessment that mm. is given to you, you should just simply run to the bank and pay. No. Mm. But it is possible that under the law, you mm. can object. Objecting is saying no. You are a, you're wrong, mm -hmm. and because you're wrong, I think I should be paying this much. Then you give the reasons as to why you should not pay the 200 million, you should not pay the 10,000, but you should be paying 5,000. Mm -hmm. Those things are stated in your letter, mm. or they are stated on the portal, whichever version you want to use. Mm. It must be in writing. Now, when you already receives this objection, mm -hmm. is objection, I would call it, mm. yes? Mm. So. Yeah. Where, where your contention is. Yes. Mm. So where your contention is when you already receives this, and this should be done within 45 days after you've received the assessment. Oh. Within 45 days. That's critical. You, you, you must have put in your objection. Mm. Now, when you already receives your objection, mm. it is going to sit down for over 90 days. I'm not saying they take all the 90 <laughs> days. <but laughs> mm. Sometimes you receive it in a week, sometimes. Yes. Even less depends. than a week. Even less mm. than a week, depending on mm. who's handling. Mm. And within 90 days, they should have given you an objection decision. Mm -hmm. Now, before they give you that objection decision, you should have paid at least 30% of that amount, either in dispute or not in dispute, the one you don't, you, you don't actually dispute, okay. whichever is higher. 
Yeah. Okay. So if but I must have dropped in some money before they you get you back. You show us that uh, your, 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 your contentions, intention. Your contentions have some money. Yes. <laughs> okay. you drop us something. Mm -hmm. Then we, we, we are there going to start considering your objection. Now, mm. once we give you the objection decision, and you're still dissatisfied, yeah. Mm. The normal process is that you can file your matter in tax appeals tribunal within maybe I think it's 30 days mm. to go to tax appeals tribunal. But what brings me here today is not to talk about what happens thereafter in tax appeals mm. tribunal. I'm here to give you the other option. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have to go that far. Yes. There is an that option is the here, extreme. which is alternative dispute resolution. And this one will save you a number of things. Mm. It, will, it, will, it will bring you closer. In fact, we remain talking because we are going to keep friends. Yeah. yeah then when you go to court and you start fighting, yes. when you fight there, mm. you, I'm not sure you're going to remain friends. Yeah. yeah. But with Even this, when you're down here, mm. I think things are, are good because you will be talking. And also remember, hmm. if you are, it's an informal person, I have a chance to start now talking. My Uganda, my Uganda. Yes. As the and way I, I understand and things. And that's why I, I was going to come to some of these jargons seem to be a little bit, you know, alien in the language, in the legal fraternity. Mm. Does your A have a way to break it down to, to the local language, um, a peace and farmer who is dealing in avocado and exporting them, that he needs to understand this in their best language? So. Yes, 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 mm. yes. Uh, definitely. Mm. Uh, they have been trying to translate most of these things mm. to all the local languages. We actually have experts there who are doing that. Yeah. And if they're not yet out there, the things are actually going to be coming soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the, they also have plans for those ones who can't read and write. Mm -hmm. they all those they plans are there because mm. any good tax system should be able to be understandable, transparent. Mm. Now, mm. there's no it's going to be transparent when I don't understand what you're saying. I must understand where you're coming from. For me yeah. to be able to understand, hey, I have to what pay What you need. Yes. Mm. Okay. So all those are in the pipeline. They're coming through. And mm. there's good groundwork. I, I love the inclusion of those yeah. with Just impairments. Just to add to what um, Alex is yes, saying, Fiona. we also have, um, in addition to the to the local languages, we do have talk shows like this. Mm. We have a, a lot of them. And as you are, we've tried to reach out to as many regions as possible. Mm -hmm. And we, we are seeing, today we are seeing URA in... Um, in local stations, mm. a country, yeah. and uh, we have talk shows. Related the other day to I was driving in the evening and I had some on Radio 1 yes, in the yes. evening, yes. Yes, mm. so we have we have programs in various languages mm. uh, in the various districts. So you mm. have maybe something in Unity FM, in, in the Northern dialect, you have mm. something in the Western dialect. So in this, we are trying to reach out to taxpayers as much as possible. And what we are saying here today is what our colleagues are saying in the other stations okay. in the local languages oh. so through that we're trying to reach as many taxpayers as possible mm. to get them to know that this is what is what is this what your is now promoting and this is what is on offer for them and this is how they can benefit mm. from alternative dispute resolution but in addition to that we also have the the famous Tijenje, the mm. URA bus. Mm -hmm. We've also been moving with that up country, and uh, we've, we've gone to various regions. Mm. As, as I speak, um, the, the URA bus is in Akawa. It's been in Akawa for two days, mm. Akawa market with the legal services dip, legal services team and they're trying to to, to enlighten taxpayers mm. about um, about tax generally to to teach them about uh, filing returns mm. and to register them for taxes and that is what we do uh, as you're even when we go up country mm. with with a bus so we're trying to reach out to as many people as possible and to spread the good news I love that. Fiona, <laughs> when it's coming to my region, um, does your A notify us before as um, um, local farmers or local businessmen that um, those in Mitoma this coming weekend, if you if you happen to be in this particular sub county, uh, the URA bus is going to come through. Please come through. Um, do we get those kind of announcements? Yes, yes, we do get those announcements, and like I said, most of them are through these programs such as this. Mm. So you'd have an advanced team going to to, oh. to spread the gospel, but also the bus comes. It's 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 so visible and it it does come with music, mm. music. It, we, we do have as your A has some songs which we call the tax songs, for mm. example, and it's most of the songs are about taxes. Yeah. So we're trying to spread the gospel of tax yes. and, and compliance. So you have these songs being played so loudly on the URA bus. We need some of it. those tax and songs. <laughs> and <laughs> to amazingly, be it yes. actually pulls crowds. Mm -hmm. So we're able to. To, to get as many people as possible to listen to our message. Nice. Alex, 
Yes. What are the benefits of um, the alternative disputes, uh, procedures, and models? M m uh, besides us being enemies, and uh, you know, uh, but but to 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 create the commandery kind of um, relationship besides that. What other more benefits come with this kind of alternative processing to this? Oh, there are quite many. Mm -hmm, like? Uh, for example, number one thing, you, you have a... Uh, I have a friend in URA. Yeah. The that's moment that's we that's have... The first thing. <laughs> yes. When I meet you, you still talk. Even yes. when I told you to pay this much, yes. you still... I, I was still calling say, yes. Alex, there is this I don't understand. Yes. Mm. And that's the tax system we want to, to, to have. Yes. Okay. Where we can have a chat and mm. talk about money. Mm. Whereas we're talking about your money, but mm. <laughs> there's a country to look after here. Oh, yeah. So, <coughs> one of the advantages is that you're going to save a lot of costs. Mm -hmm. In the other side of litigation, you're going to have to pay very many lawyers, sometimes people hire four firms, mm. things like that. But in this instant case, mm. if you took the option of alternative dispute resolution, you're going to have to save a lot of money because you won't pay that much. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is just a matter of you walking over there, have a seat, you sit, and you know, you start comparing certain things. Here and there, I'm right. Here and there, I'm wrong. So it gives you an avenue to actually speak for yourself. Mm. It is you talking for yourself. It is you who understands the business better than anyone else. So you can actually get to, to present your, 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 your reasons. Your case. Your case better mm. than mm. any other person. The other thing, I think while in the boardroom there, or whichever part of your area you might sit, it might even be at the balcony, mm. you will be able to speak in your own language. It doesn't matter. Once you say you can't uh, do these things of English, uh -huh. eh, very fast they would have brought you someone. Oh, yeah. Who's going to understand? So, which might not be an option for you in court that much because you have to get an interpreter. If the interpreter is not around, then you come next time. Yes, it, yes. it becomes. Now, in this instant case, you, 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 you definitely can speak whichever language that oh. there is okay. and then, you know, get there. Then also, it is a single procedure. Mm. All you do is write a letter. They receive the letter. Whatever language. Yes. And then, you know, uh, people jot down the things. Of course, it's we prefer that, that you write it in that language that yes. is acceptable. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It okay. Wow, that's uh, nice. Uh, mm. uh, because why, why would we be interpreting mm. uh, to other languages if that means there are people... What matters is that I'm compliant yes. and I'm trying to actually be uh, yeah, okay. All we want is mm. you to be compliant yes. and put in that last coin for us. Mm -hmm. So this single procedure is it's a, a one-off. Mm. Write your letter, note that you write a, a, someone who file a plaint and then they put in a WSD written mm. statement of reasons and I don't know what else. Yeah. That paperwork is not there. It's, it's something very simple. And mm. this will guide you to probably understand that sometimes you don't have to really fight. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, part of the it o autonomy. It is mm. you in control. Of my narrative. Yes. Not a lawyer, yes. not a what. You're controlling it. Mm. Yes. Mm. You can be able to say, uh, I want this thing finished in a week. You'll be able, you'll be available. People are there to listen to you. Mm -hmm. They're able to look into your evidence. They're able to look into your receipt books and everything to make sure that actually what you're doing or what you're presenting is something that is empiric enough for to be a basement, either mm. to change the assessment or take it higher. There's also a part of neutrality mm. in these things. Now, for the court side, if I went to tax appeals tribunal, there is a chance that you may mediate. Yes. With uh, it's called court annexed mediation, mm. Mm. meaning court will say, "Do you really want to talk about this with URA?" They send you somewhere mm. with a mediator, and the mediator can be now guiding the parties. And then you well see that is time consumed. Yeah, but mm. well that is time consumed. But still, with the mediator, it will save you time because if you went to fight, you <laughs> you might you know, you can't control the outcome. Oh yes. Yeah, but here with the mediator, you you're able to control the outcome because mm. you have a listening ear, mm. other than going back to the ring and fighting. So the neutrality part is that each party is being honest about this thing, mm. and they're saying this receipt is missing. And the other party is saying, yes, I don't have that receipt. Mm. However, the other ways I can prove is that I, I, okay. For example, mm. definitely the boat is not moving on top of the water mm. without fuel. Mm. Definitely that's an expense, fuel. whereas I don't have mm. that expense. Whereas I don't have that receipt. The receipt, yeah. Yeah. And also, if the fish, I don't catch fish that day, mm. whereas it's a problem, but I'll show you I didn't catch. Okay. Yeah. Now, also, the other... Be 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 advantage. Before you go to the other advantage, mm -hmm. already Andrew on Twitter says, "What are the chances of winning that case in case the dispute goes far to the to the court? Has URA ever lost cases and it pays those taxpayers?" Yes. 
They are numerous. Yes. <laughs> they are numerous. Uh, and you yeah. pay. And you are yes. pays. Yes. Uh, if I was lying, I would tell you that I have not mm. lost the case. But <laughs> <laughs> they are there. Thank you, Alex. They are there, there, there. Okay. And we always pay mm. diligently and on time, by the way. Oh. Yes, Actually, I it's the biggest investment you would ever mm. make. If you paid <laughs> and argued later. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Like you, you complied, you paid. Yes. But again, you put your dispute before for mm -hmm. listening and okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, Opori uh, Konathan, mm, well, I think uh, still managed to pay tax that is used to pay those uh, earnings. Okay, I, I think uh, Jonathan, you, Oporia, you're a little bit off the topic. Um, someone here says, uh, Great conversation, Chamagero. For the first time, I can understand a conversation with URA with simple English. Well done, we need more of this. But my question is, how does the bus look like? <laughs> it's amazing. I think this will come back to you. Um, uh, Kulo. How does the bus look like? Uh, we should have had a picture of, of that bus, maybe. No, um, hmm. The bus, it's a, it's a double-decker bus. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's blue. It's, it's got our colors, the okay. URA colors. Okay. As you can see at the back behind... Uh, it has a yellow, it has it white, has it has blue. It has, blue. has yellow and it, it has got URA and it's, it has a label to Jenje. Okay. So, and it's, it's so visible. Once, uh. once you see it, you'll know that that's the URA bus because of the colors and the okay. words on the bus. So, simply put, when you see a double-decked kind of uh, bus in your area with loud music playing tax songs with colors yellow, blue, and white, that's the taxation bus. Yes, <laughs> yes. Any other benefits? We can now go back to our conversation. Actually, that bus is a one-stop center. It For everything. Everything. Yeah. everything. What can I do with the bus in case it comes in my area, now that you've actually hinted about it being a one-stop center? Mm. You can go and tell them I earned this much money, but I've not yet reported. Okay. And then you can now tell them. I can actually get my TIN number there? Yes. yes uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Everything, whatever everything. avenue, that you, whatever services that you are gives, mm -hmm. they're inside that bus. They're there. They're available. Okay. Yes. You have free tax education uh -huh. because they are experienced tax administrators on the bus uh -huh. yes please well, make sure that it is uh, it is not at a washing bay <laughs> 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 if, it's, so if it's within the market you <laughs> reach out for the service yes but mm. also andrew uh, we could start with what is your problem as a taxpayer okay yes because it's also important for you to know what your challenge is mm. so that you can actually address it so okay. when you come to the bus um, you could raise your issues and then you could address because different taxpayers have got different issues. Different needs. Let's talk about places that don't have um, internet, Alex. And I have a dispute. And um, maybe the URA office seems to be far from where I am. Mm. Um, do I write a letter? Can I write a letter and I give it to my son to ride a bike and take it to that office and file it on my behalf as long as I've given my TIN number? Andrew, before I answer that question, <laughs> yes, yes, there is a point that I'd left out. Please, about uh, the benefits. About the benefits. Yes. There is a part of confidentiality. Oh, that's how the bus looks like, comrades. Yeah. This is how the bus looks like. Um, you s you, you'll see it in your area. Thank you so much, producer. You'll see it in your area with all this kind of decoration. It has a screen. It has very good um, music. But it comes in those colors. And it's mm. a double-decked kind of a bus. Or in some instances, it, it may be just easy like that. But you see something looking like that in your area, please go and um, all your queries about the taxation will be answered. And the music but is so loud. Uh, but you, Alex. Close the crowd. Yes. So with the alternative dispute resolution yes you have a chance as a taxpayer mm. to actually keep your books confidential mm -hmm. because now right now we are just going to you're going to be between you and yourself talking about your books of accounts and your money and whatever an problem agent with there is no one coming into this whole idea yes you 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 you're doing this thing by you the parties uh -huh. It is different when you go to court because court means you're putting out these things in the public. In the public. Anyone can come, read mm. everything. But now mm. with alternative dispute resolution, mm. there is confidentiality. It is high. It's up there. It's mm. one of the things that actually we look at. Mm. The other thing is uh, the finality uh -huh. of the word or whatever you've agreed upon. Chigwera. Chigwera. <laughs> That's mm. so you, you don't have this extension of mm. I'm going to file an appeal, I'm mm. going to court of appeal, I'm going to Supreme Court. No. It is you. Both parties are happy. Yeah. They have told me to pay three hundred million, but they are right. They are right. Mm. They are right. Mm. Or yeah, yeah. URA says, yeah, we are assessed wrongly. 
Mm, this nice. is the wrong person. Well, the conversation um, will always come to an end, but um, I love the fact that there is mediation, there is uh, conciliation and arbitration um, in the possible ways to be done. Now, to you, my dear taxpayer, I want to tell you, the same applies to me. We, we, we have a resolution, a dispute resolution mechanism through your A. Can we make your A one of our places where you just drop by? The same way you actually say, let me pass by the supermarket. Maybe we need to make this a regular visit that you stop by the agents of your A, go by their offices, try to see how your tax is actually running. Not only that, there are benefits to this. Um, Fiona, what are the benefits of one being a very good compliant uh, taxpayer, for starters? Um, are you giving some gifts to that? Yes, we, okay. do, we do actually recognize taxpayers, uh -huh. the most compliant ones. Uh, we do recognize them on an annual basis mm. and awards are given to them. But not only that, if you are a compliant taxpayer, there are many benefits. For example, it would be very easy for you to do business with government. Mm. And we all know that government is one of the, the biggest, most consumer. biggest <laughs> consumer. Yeah. So, and, and you, what <coughs> we're seeing today is, uh, for example, in most procurement processes mm. uh, with government, one of the requirements is a tax clearing certificate. Mm. And the only way you can get a tax clearing certificate is if you are registered for a TIN mm -hmm. and you're actually paying taxes. That is Less a of point. that, you're not there. Less of that, there's no way you get a tax clearing certificate. Yeah. So those are some of the benefits of, of being compliant. But also you as a citizen, you feel good when you see, for example, the benefits like security yeah. in place. And you know, oh, that is part of my taxes. And as you're, we've had this campaign called Because of You, mm. where we, we try to to bring out to the public mm. the, um, the fruits of their... It's more like an accountability compliance. report. Yes, because accountability. of you, we are here, yeah. Yes. Mm. So we've had campaigns like uh, the Because of You campaign, where mm. we're trying to demonstrate that because mm. you have paid your taxes, mm. because you have complied, mm. we've been able to construct roads, we've mm. been able to build hospitals, we've been able to uh, provide security as a government. So those are some of the benefits of, 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 of being compliant as a taxpayer. But oh. also... Um, and also, to be able to meet our to meet our our, our targets as URA and to become economically independent as a country, as a country, yes. So, uh, and every country would definitely want to be proud uh, of the fact that they are not relying a lot on donors, mm. and and that's one of the things that we as URA are trying to promote so much. So, by paying your taxes, mm. we are building, we are, we are putting into the national basket. We're mm. putting into, we're collecting, and with that, we we'll, it will strengthen us as a country mm -hmm. and we'll be less dependent. On, on, on the donor. donor. Yes. I love that. Um, Alex, as we're finalizing, what happens when the taxpayer fails to come through the arbitration process, um, the mediation has failed, um, all the above avenues to amicably settle this has failed? What happens? <laughs> it's a part I don't want to talk about. But I know, but we have to talk about it. You have to talk about it because they are, these, these are facts. Yes. Now, what we've been talking about is that option where you're still talking but i'm very sure mm. not all disputes are settled yeah and because uganda we have a, we have laws to follow mm -hmm. and also in any organized community there must be guidelines very much so. now there's what they call distress proceedings you've uh, you've not uh, the instances where a taxpayer is not saying that he can't pay mm -hmm. the instance is he, he's saying that also uh, whereas i can't pay I don't have what to, you can take. Mm. Yeah? No collateral. Mm. Yes. Yeah. In all instances, <coughs> there is a possibility of there being a bad debt, but you just you just don't call you just don't create a bad debt. Yes. For you are to know that uh, you are to write off a taxpayer. This one can't be. There is a lot of vigorous uh, uh, procedure procedure that yeah. go, it can go through. However, where you have some money and you don't want to pay, you just don't want to pay. The law also puts there certain things that you can go through. For example, we mm. can distress on probably the property. Or if you give us that title and you fail to pay, we can have that one, have a chart and, you know, mm -hmm. we can sell that one off, we, have, we take off our money and give you back the, the balance. The balance. Or alternatively, also, the other, there is something called the agency notice. Okay. Uh, and that's why I don't want to get to this point. Because mm. with the agency <laughs> notice, for example, it does not alert you that I'm coming. No. It will sweep up all the money on the account. They don't have to ask you. And the bank does not have to tell you that we are going to, there's an agency notice here coming. They but will sweep it off. But I have not found my funds on my account. Yes. They will notify you that we are, you get a notification. You have these assessments, you have not paid for this for a long time, mm. and the agency notice is here. It will sweep off. So
shape woman. of the oh wow. Now we don't want to get that level. Mm. That's why we are here today and telling you mm. before you get there, mm. there is an alternative for you. You can sit down, have a chat, a, a serious chat that is going to bring value mm. to this country. Mm. And then you see that you can build this country and take it forward. Mm. Again, uh, about the, the notice, um, let's talk about the notice to the third parties. Is there a way you are a can deter the other people in my supply chain not to work with me because I'm not compliant? Um. I didn't get that. Like question. the third parties, the agency notice to the third parties that you're dealing with Chamagelo. But Chamagero is not compliant. Okay. Well, mm. What Yuri usually does is, for example, if uh, there's a tax liability and URA is aware that that third party owes or, or has money that is due to you, yeah. then you can we can enforce and, and, and recover that money from that third party. Oh. But in most cases, the third party agency notice applies where URA issues an agency notice to the bank and the bank is required to remit monies that it holds on behalf of you as a taxpayer it in settlement of the tax debt so and the banks because uh, we we do have a relationship with the banks mm. most of these banks do collect taxes for ura mm. and they've been uh, compliant they've been trying to support ura in the business because they do also understand and appreciate that if mm. they do not comply mm. then we will uh, enforce the law against them so they've been trying to comply oh it's not also only to the bank it's possible that you have suppliers mm. that owe you money yeah. oh yes yeah, and if definitely like it's not my own making yes, yes. Mm. so you will send the agents notice to the mm. supplier Ah. Instead of paying you, they will pay. Yeah, they will yes. pay you. Uh, yeah. Yes, and that it will inform me that your supplier has paid <laughs> you this much. This one I've yes. knocked off. Okay. Uh. How do we get to the temporary closure of business? When they close your business. Yeah. And w what does the word temporarily mean in terms of uh, the, in the context of the taxes? It it has a particular timeline. Mm. I can't get it off cuff, but it mm. can't be forever. Okay. Mm. But as long as you have not paid your taxes. They might mm. close that business. Of course, they're forcing you to do what? To pay. To be, to yeah. be forthcoming. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's where it, th there are very many ways of distressing. And one mm. of them is closure of business, mm. uh, agents' notices. Mm. They can sell the property. There are so many things. Mm. And also, like uh, previously, Fiona had talked about uh, what do you get from being tax compliant. Mm. There are a lot of things. Yeah. One of them is that you'll have a clean slate, for example. Mm. Why would you come for this alternative dispute resolution? Any business should have a time whereby it is, it is organized that it is not looking at the past. Yes. For the past five years. I should be able not to think about those things and keep those kind of records. Yeah. They should be able, because I was at a clean slate by that time, I should be able to move forward. To maintain. And look for yeah. other deals and not go back. Oh so yeah. this alternative distribution resolution is met to actually help the taxpayer mm. to be tax compliant and also have a clean slate in that you don't have skeletons behind. Behind you. Mm. Yes. So like Andrew, just to add in, uh, yeah. um, I think the one thing that has to come out very clear to our dear, ca our dear taxpayers mm. is at the time URA invokes these, can I call them harsh yes. enforcement measures, mm. it's, that is a point where the taxpayers are like not responsive. Yes. As in, URA has tried to reach out to you. Assessments have been raised. Uh -huh. Calls have been made. Emails have been sent. Um, Organe. Oh, oh, You're just not <laughs> yes. responding. Yeah. And so that's when URA will move and enforce, use these, uh, um, these hardcore the measures. Yes, yeah. these hard measures. And, mm. and the challenge is that. Uh, when when you have one of those instances happen, uh -huh. then the, the public is is there's an uproar. I know. An uproar, but it doesn't happen all the time yeah. because there's so many taxpayers out there who mm. have had um, assessments raised against them, and they have come and they have been resolved. Mm. And then you have just a few who do not actually make an appearance, mm. and then you have you have your a proceed to, to the hard end. and then it's 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 an uproar so wow. it's, it's just a message to our taxpayers please as much as possible come to us let's, have a, let's have a conversation well thank you so much fiona kulo the acting manager legal services department and uh, lidechi sally alex um, who happens to be the acting supervisor the litigation comrades as a country this year we have close to 27 trillion to collect 26.4 26. 26. trillion Ugandan shillings to collect if we are going to make this. And remember, in this financial year, we're doing a lot of domestic financing. So the government will actually need a lot of money to make sure that this budget works out. But remember the demand notice, the agency notice to third parties, temporary closure, distress proceedings, and seizure of your goods. Those are the ad ends for URA.
come, let's have a conversation with your heir. Like the way we are having these um, uh, usual visits to the medical centers or to go to hospitals just for checkup, let's now start to have what we call the tax checkups. Just check in to any, you know, your office and tell them I'm here to see how we are holding up. If there is any dispute before you actually say, let's go to court, there are other procedures you need to explore as a countryman. And to the good taxpayers, we want to thank you. But Karen, we only have 2.5 that are actually remitting taxes. If you're not compliant, kindly go get a TIN number. Not only that, reach out your air on twitter the url ug not only that they have the toll free number give them a call but above all if you have a dispute if you feel you're unfairly treated in one of the mails or one of the assessments kindly go to any of their centers and have these resolved i'm andrew chama good afternoon